Hey guys, welcome to T's Creative Corner. My name's T, and this is my creative corner of YouTube where I do fun creative art videos anywhere from art time lapses to product reviews. Today's video is going to be a product review, an unboxing, and challenge. Every month I receive the Art Snacks box and they have a challenge where you need to use all the products in the box to make a piece of art. Another fun thing is that they give you a piece of candy to go with the Art Snacks theme and this month we got a extra sour cry baby bubble gum which my boyfriend will like because I don't like sour candy. We also got a Art Snacks Cume Automatic Long Point Sharpener. Uh, the menu that tells you all of the items and a joke, which is what's an artist's favorite swimming technique? <laughs> the brush stroke. <laughs> that's that's kind of funny. Their signature Art Snacks pretzel pencil sticker which comes in a different color every month this month it is a lime green and inside the tissue paper we have the Shinha art touch twin brush marker which I know is a good Copic alternative a Sakura sumo grip retractable eraser a Zig Millennium Pen in 0.5 millimeters, and last but not least, a Karen Diache Edelweiss pencil. Every time I have to read the names, I can never say it properly. <laughs> <gasps> the sharpener comes in teal. Oh my, if you guys haven't, if you guys can't tell, I am obsessed with the color teal, turquoise, whatever you want to call it. I don't care. I am obsessed. I have their Art Snacks limited edition pencil case that came in the teal color. Just, I love teal. Absolutely love it. The eraser is pretty thick. I like that it's square and I can get like the fine details with like the very edge. Like I can do straight lines when I erase and I like that it retracts into the refillable holder. So since I have the brush marker I am going to do this on marker paper and this is gonna be hard because it's kind of like a one marker challenge where all I have to really work with to change the value of the orange marker is to one layer it I could also use my colorless blender but I'm not sure if that'd be considered cheating I can use the pencil to shade in some areas or I can just do a straight up white orange black outline I'm not sure what I would do maybe a monarch butterfly or an orange or maybe my sour candy that I received I don't know I I had a hard time trying to figure out what to draw with this orange marker and I eventually just decided on a scene and what better scene than a sunset? So I drew up my design on my iPad Pro, printed it out on some transfer paper, and traced my outlines onto the marker paper. I was recently able to print on my transfer paper because I just got an inkjet printer which is the Canon Pro Pixima 100, and I am so excited for this. You guys have no idea. I'll tell you a little about that later on. And went over all the lines after I traced them with the Sig pen and ruler to make sure that those lines for the walls and the window were straight. I did find this picture of a girl sitting in a little reading nook on Pinterest and I edited the photo so it would be more of a sunset scene and I really like how it came out. I was going to put a butterfly on the pillow but decided not to. Image, I thought my original drawing was going to be a lot smaller 
by the time that I decided that I actually wanted to do it, my orange marker started to die. So I just have a girl sitting in her little reading nook, reading a book with her leg warmers on. It's like a cozy sunset fall scene. And I did say in a previous video that I wanted to do more of a landscape, but this isn't really a landscape technically, even though the window has landscape. It's the closest I can probably get to it right now. But this is my first scene that involves a person and their environment. I have not drawn a picture like this probably since I was like seven when I would draw me and my family out in the yard and stick figure form. So making sure that my proportions and perspective was all correct was difficult for me. But the Zig pen worked wonders for outlining. I like, I don't like using brush pens for outlining because I do straight lines and I don't like it will change its thickness on me in random spots. I just want it to be. So that worked for me for this drawing. I then went in with the pencil to shade in all the areas of shadows on her leg, the earth, the pillows, the wall, um, the little wall of the nook, the windows, the lantern that she has, the, um, her sweater, her hair, her face, and I used a piece of paper to smudge that all in and blend it out. I was having a hard time trying to get those dark shadows and I would have to press hard, but it was very, very erasable. I love that I didn't have to worry about any pencil marks, even when I was pressing hard. I also didn't have to use the eraser hard at all either. It just picked up all the graphite particles super easily. And I think I only had to sharpen my pencil once or twice throughout the video. But let me get to the marker, which was the whole reason that we're drawing, we're drawing this on marker paper. It is it's the basic color that I'm using for my light source. And I was really sad after blocking in the left side of the drawing, the wall area, that I noticed that the marker was starting to streak. And I was I was just like, no, like, I, I should not have done such a big drawing. This is on, and this is on bigger than eight and a half by 11 paper. I'm not sure what size it is. I gotta look at it. But I knew I had so much orange I had to put down and it was, I was getting stressed out and I was trying to salvage it. And that's what I, I ultimately started using my colorless blender because I was not going to be able to, to layer the orange marker like I wanted to get the darker areas so I was going to have to work in the opposite direction and make the areas that were going to be light lighter than they actually were supposed to be. So what I did was I used the marker on a piece of tape and I just colored on it to get some little ink drops and everything and then I used my colorless blender the brush nib, I went over it, and I picked up that ink, and um, as I drew with it on the drawing, it was lightening, because what the Colorless Blender does is it's supposed to lighten the marker that you choose to the paper, like it's supposed to blend it to the paper. So it was making that orange a light yellow orange. I used the colorless blender to go over the areas and just blend out the orange and make it lighter, more of a yellow orange because I was not going to be able to go over the areas again with the marker since it was dying to make it darker. Rather I'd go the other way. And 
I used the pencil actually to make the other areas darker. And I think I ruined my colorless blender brush nib with the pencil because now it's black. It was white before I started this drawing and now it is full blown black. I'm gonna have to get the replaceable tips and change it out. But I like this scene a lot and you'll also see as I draw that my camera starts moving slowly but surely and I did not realize it until I finished drawing the image and I was like, yes, I'm done, done filming. Look up, my camera's sideways. I'm like, why? Why did this happen? <laughs> So while I'm drawing, let me tell you guys about my new planner. I recently decided that I was going to start selling art prints on Etsy, but I didn't want to go through a service like Staples, and I didn't know any reliable art printing services around here. So I'm relying on myself and I did a lot of research on printers. I originally had an Anna Griffin Kodak Verite 6 and that worked for black and white. Not so much of me being able to adjust the, my colors properly. But with this one, I did a test print. The first print came out perfect. The colors matched beautifully. The black was wonderful. Like it was like a solid black and it, it was borderless. It was amazing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do like a video on my printer and just show you guys because I got so excited. I was just like, yes, it's finally gonna happen because I've been wanting to sell my art since the beginning of the year but I just didn't know how and I didn't know how to get the prints out there like I could sell my originals but I, I, I just didn't know how to make it available for prints in case people could not afford my originals because my originals are mostly oil paints and that isn't cheap so I actually set out a goal I found the printer that I wanted I was just like, all right, if I'm going to do this, I need to make sure that I have at least four to five designs ready for my store. So I did digital art instead, and I have all my math drawings on my Instagram. If you haven't seen those, you should check it out. The link is always in the description. My link to my Etsy store it will also be there. I also went over one of my original art snacks pieces which was my sign language um, line art for ART in cyan magenta yellow and black and that is now also available as a print and I was just happy because I take great pride and being an artist, and I would love to make this my full-time career. So I'm working on it. I have my store up, I have art prints available. I'm selling them, I think, at a decently cheap price, I don't know. I have no idea how much it actually cost me to print each print yet. So I just set it at like five to five dollars for a four by six and a $20, $30 for a 13 by 19 but you guys should go check it out so that's just a quick update for all of you I have an Etsy store I have a Canon Pixma Pro 100 I'm selling art prints oh I also forgot I'm building a new desk 
well, technically my mom is because she's a woodworker. She does a bunch of crafts with wood. She's built tables. She's built doors. She's built signs. I'm still waiting on my sign. But she, I lent her some money. And rather than her paying me back, I told her, I want this for a desk. If you can build it, you don't have to pay me back. Ultimately, she just spent the money that she owed me for the wood. And we're going to build it together when it's not raining. Because it's currently raining here in New England this weekend. And I can't wait. Because I have clips of us shopping for the materials. I'm going to have clips of us building it, sanding it, staining it, putting it all together. But setting up my area. Getting, I'm going to do a little tour. I'm really excited for this desk. I've been waiting. And I'm going to have a lot more space and I'm going to be able to get better lights because now I'll actually have a place to put them. I'm going to do the tabletop lights because right now I like have barely enough space to do my drawings. I can't put two lights right there and I don't have enough space to get the big tall lights, studio lights. So yeah. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Here is my finished drawing of a girl and her reading the girl with the sunset falling in the fields and her being glowed by the sun's light. And yeah. <laughs> As always, thank you for watching. You can follow me on all my social medias at tcreativity, one word on Facebook, Instagram, Vero, Twitter, and now Etsy. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.